Okay everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video on Gran Turismo 7. We're back with, as usual, our weekly guide to try and help you get them 2 million credits as quickly as possible. So if you do enjoy these videos, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, let me know in the comment section how you got on with this one. And apologies for it being a little bit late today. Had a little bit of a nightmare with the editing. I edited the wrong lap, had to restart the whole video and yeah started again on this one so yeah a little bit of a frustrating day but we've got there in the end so yeah smash that like button and let, let's get on with this so as you can see there we're in the veyron group 4 car at le mans it's going to be a fun one let's go into this and show you how to enter it so go into sport mode in the top right hand corner and from there you'll be greeted with the online time trial section click on that you'll have two separate time trials we have a guide for the red bull ring one so you can check out that on the channel as well but we're going to go into the veyron group 4 car at le mans and you can see there the current goal time is a 42.837 4 minute 40 uh, sorry 4 minute 22 837. I predict that's going to be a 4 minute 21.750 by the time this ends to get gold around that kind of level. Now, I am in the top 10, so if you do want to load my ghost up from in the timeline time trial section, you can chase my ghost, so feel free to load it up from there. But let's get on with this and try and help you get this gold as quickly as possible. I spent quite a while doing this today. I really wanted to get a 14. There was a 4 minute 14.89 in this if we if I was to hook it up, but I just didn't hook the lap up. But We'll go through it now. So into turn one, you're going to take this corner flat out. You're not going to lift until you actually get a little bit further into the corner here. You can see here, you just give it a little lift as you go through the curb. And then as soon as the car's in a straight line, before the total sign, you're onto the brakes. Now try and keep the car in a straight line during the braking phase or the car might snap and you'll end up in the barrier. Now at this point here, you're going to try and turn in very early. You can take a lot of track limits off on this curb look at that all the white line is irrelevant your right tire can go all the way over that so all the way over there and again on the x entry into this corner you can go in so early again left hand tight again over the white line it's not going to give you any invalidated lap if you get it done right so again just don't take too much off because it will invalidate it if you take too much off that corner but again aggressively on the exit use some of the curb and now power your way on this downhill section be very careful on your right here of them little signpost bollard things on the right because if you clip them it validates your lap so yeah some strange track limits for this combination now into this next corner as soon as the car straightened up onto the brakes now you're going to try and take a very tight line into this corner don't go too far out wide and then onto the power nice and early on the middle of the apex and again be very careful you don't clip them bollards on the right because again that will invalidate your lap amount of laps that got invalidated for me today doing that is quite frustrating but yeah into the next braking zone you're going to break just now it's very tricky to get this perfect but just after the sector split delta get onto the brakes and try and get over this curb on the right now i ran a little bit wide here you can see i didn't get the angle right had to lift off the throttle slightly and didn't get very good exit speed on that corner so lost out there and that's going to lose us down the straight slightly so do remember to short shift this car you're revving it about 60 percent of the rev bar and we're coming up to the next braking zone now where we're going to break just short of that 100 board you want to be braking just after the 200 short of the 100 and now you're going to start turning in very early because again you can take a lot of this corner off and you're going to see how this second sector split is not the greatest because of that exit of that um fast corner going onto that long straight so again all the way over the curb and try and get it rotated in it's a little dab of the brakes here to give a bit of rotation just as you come off the curb then back onto the throttle as you're going over the curb you see onto the throttle now and just try not to run too far wide there the white line is basically the limits and you can then get on the power maximum over the second sector split now at this point here i'm a little bit down i'm actually that second sector 42.119 is actually nearly a tenth and a half of what i should be through that sector so a little bit disappointed with that sector time there and now into the next braking zone again 100 boards braking before them 100 boards at the end of the straight and again into the braking zone try and trail break this car in quite aggressively you want to get it rotating in so left hand tire is going to go over the curb so trail break in left hand tire over the curb and then really quite aggressively swing it back to the right because you're going to dab the brake just to get a bit of rotation and then you see over the curb and then onto the throttle as early as you can because you want to carry as much speed as you can all the way up this next area just be careful you don't go too far wide there because you can invalidate the lap by going over the curb too much again make sure you're shifting around 60 70 percent with this car on the straights because that is the optimal point on the red bar now 
into the next breaking zone, you can use this fence and the and the marshal there on the left or the fence on the right as your breaking reference. You see, as we get on the brakes, we're pretty much dead level with them. And be very, very cautious how much steering input you put in when you're braking at this phase because it can snap the car. So try and keep the car as straight as possible and then try and get it squared off as you go into this right-hand corner. So you're going to see here now trail braking in, second gear, clip the curb and then onto the throttle aggressively. You want to carry as much speed out this exit as possible. You can actually go again over the white line, use the curb and then power your way along the straight again, shifting around 60-70% on that um, bar as you go along the main straight and then into this next corner. Be very careful on this corner because the car will snap very violently if you brake too aggressively and turn. So again, you can see the braking, about 50% braking input and then just trail braking it and then back onto the brakes once the car is straightened up. So don't get on that brake too early because if you do, you will end up in the wall again. So again, into this next left-hand corner, trail braking in, down to second gear as you're going into the corner, you can see for a bit of rotation and then up to third gear. You can see I actually turn in a little bit too early then and didn't square it off and off. And you can see the ghost pulls away a little bit there as I don't get the exit speed from there. And we go through on a 301.224, again, a 10th down on what I really would like to be on that sector. Again, braking just before the 50 board on the left-hand side here. Make sure you break in early enough to get it slowed down so that you can really slam the throttle down on the exit of this corner. So you can see as we're going into this corner, a tiny little bit of trail braking as we go in and then keep your eye on that throttle input really aggressively on the throttle as we power out of this corner. It's important to get a good exit off that corner because it will obviously carry the speed all the way up to the next um, right hand corner. So again, short, short shifting all the way up the straight and again, from this point here, you're going to go down to sixth and then down to fifth gear as you're putting the brakes in just before the green Astro on the left there. So again, be very careful the car doesn't snap here. You've got to try and keep it nice and smooth. Right hand tire as close to the curb as possible and then aggressively on the throttle because you're going to carry as much speed through this section as possible. You're not going to lift here. Again, flat on the throttle, turn in while you're going through the left hand corner and now you're just going to give it a tiny little lift off the throttle here. You can see a little lift off the throttle and a tiny little dab of the brakes as we go into this next left-hand corner. And that's just going to be enough to keep the car rotating as you're going through aggressively on the throttle. Now again, another little dab of the brake as we're going into this next right-hand corner. This is all putting the weight transfer onto the front tyres to give you more grip on the front of the car so you can carry a bit more speed as you're going onto the throttle around this long right-hand corner. Now we're into a very tricky left-hand corner. So as you're coming through this right, you're going to swing it back to the left, little dab of brakes before the RMC board there. And then again, you're going to see, you're going to try and get back onto the throttle as early as possible and up into fifth gear as you're going through the corner. So you see that early fifth gear shift and then that'll power you out the exit and all the way into the final few corners now again very tricky corners to get right these but you can really take advantage of the track limits so keep an eye on these track limits as we come into here braking midway pretty much halfway of the pit entry box there in terms of the tarmac and again down to third gear so fourth third and now start rotating it in with a bit of trail braking as you approach the corner you can really take advantage of the track limits here look at the left hand tire up onto the curb, almost onto the gravel, the ghost in front that we're chasing. That shows you what limits you can get away with there. And again, right hand tire is going to do the same here. So again, a little dab of the brakes to put the weight back onto the front, rotate it to the right. That'll give you better line into the final chicane now. So again, as soon as the car is pretty much straightened up onto the brakes here to slow it down for this final chicane. So again, braking down to second gear. And again, you're going to really attack these curbs keep an eye on just how much you can take off so up to third gear over the curb and again onto the final part up onto this sausage curb you can see middle of the car basically over the red sausage curb and try and get on that throttle as aggressively as you can and carry the speed all the way to finish not the best final corner that i had done but we still go over the line for a 14 a four minute 15.350 now again there is definitely a four minute 14 available for me on this. Whether I'll go back on it again, it's possible because I did enjoy this time trial. I really did. I put quite a bit of time into this to try and get a solid lap in because I wanted that 14, but it didn't happen. So yeah, not overly happy with the lap that I got, but still it's good enough for a guide as we watch it in the chase camera. Now again, you can really see just how much of these track limits you can take advantage of at Le Mans. But it's quite strange that other corners like this right hand corner, if you even touch that like the cone there it's an invalidated lap so again pd's track limits a bit all over the place around here again obviously we've got this in kilometers now for you lot so if you're using not miles per hour you can see the speed through this corner this corner again you can see how we had to lift off a little bit there off the front and didn't really carry the speed on the exit when i looked 
at the replay there. We were a couple of miles per hour down when I was watching the um, footage from what I would like to be. So that's going to affect us all up this straight. And that's why I was about 10th and a half off by the second sector split. So again, if we would have got that right, could have been challenging for number one in the world, which I think at the point of doing this was a 15.1. But like I say, I'm pretty sure this is going to go into the low 14s because I can see a 14.7. I'm not particularly amazingly strong at this combination. So I'm pretty sure that people that are really good at this combo will be getting very low 14s around here it will happen i'm pretty sure of that so again you can see that short shift in here we're watching this in full speed and you can see shifting just after the halfway point there you can see it seems to be the optimal way sometimes i found that revving out a little bit in certain situations could help coming out of a corner if you know for the traction and stuff like that it is a case of you know don't always do like 50 percent dead in the middle sometimes you can go up to 70% on the exits and corners or even more on some corners that I was revving it nearly to the end of the bar on some corners in second gear so again into this corner track limits again you can really jump over these curbs and just be careful here that you don't go over the white line too early you can go over the white line but just not too early it's again very strange track limits on this track and again I'd like to see more consistency with these limits that if PD could introduce it somehow um, because it's kind of just a case of trial and error really until you figure it out i've got this track figured out in terms of limits now i know it because we've done it in group two we've done it in group one we've done it in group four so most of us know it now but not everyone does and i think that's where pd needs to start being a little bit more consistent throughout the tracks different combinations and making it you know a bit more predictable i'd say but i have to say though it's a fun combo to time trial hopefully you'll enjoy it and i also think this might be one of the easier time trials to gold because most of the track is straight it's power and it's a long lap so it means that you've got a massive amount of time to get that gold i think it's like i say it's about seven seconds or something like that the difference between the top time and what you need for a gold now as long as you just keep get reasonable exits on these corners and making sure that you're carrying reasonable speed through these corners as well and the final sector i think a lot of people will be able to get the gold if they put the time into making sure they get this track learned properly so yeah make sure you check out the guide and figure it out as much as you can again onto that power out of that corner really important to get that power down there really early and to carry the speed all the way up into this next section and this is where you can actually pretty much make or break your lap at this point because a lot of the corners we've done so far have been you know chicanes onto exits just getting the exit speed now it's about carrying the speed through the corner you can see making sure you lift off nice and early trying to get that right hand tire as close to the curb as possible that is really important because the earlier you get onto that curb the earlier you can get on the throttle and the more speed you can carry through this whole section again that little lift off little dab of the brakes gives it just that front end you can see how it really puts the weight onto the front of the car here and enables us to hog the inside massively again down to fourth then into fifth gear carrying the speed all the way through that section done that reasonably okay probably that there made up for my mistakes earlier on when i lost probably about two temps on them other corner so we did make it up a little bit there but it could have been so much quicker if we'd have just got that first uh, the second sector a little bit better again into this corner not too bad there final corner a bit scruffy you can see i didn't really get the line perfect on that final corner but it could have you know it could have gone a lot worse it could have been invalidated like some other laps that i've done but hopefully this will help you out hit that like button subscribe to the channel feel free to share these videos wherever you want and i'll see you for more of these videos in the future thanks again for watching everyone